broadcast because people yeah. are joining in just okay. one minute. Yeah, I think we need to get going. Also, panelists, if you would, um, mute yourself unless you're talking so we don't get any background noise. I am just praying that my internet holds up this morning. I popped out once and I sure don't want to do that again. Oh, shoot, it says your internet connection is unstable. Well, Kathy, if I pop off, please sing and dance until I come back. we Will do. <laughs> okay, I think we have people on now. We had, as of, okay. this, as of early this morning, we had 124 people signed up. And uh, so far now, we've got about 110. Wonderful. So I'll wait just a few more minutes to let people get in. Jim Hall has raised his hand. Good morning, Jim. Can you hear us? I've got several people raising their hands. Jim, are you on? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, you don't need to raise your hand until we get into the Q&A section, so I appreciate that. So I'm going to put you on mute, and we'll get started here in just a moment. Glad you could join us. Okay, anybody who's raising their hand as an attendee, you don't need to do that. I'll see you as you come on board. And we'll get started in just a second because more, more people are joining. <laughs> Actually, pop it on and off. Oh, mercy. <laughs> All right, Nancy, you ready for me to, to start this? Yes. Great. Good. I believe. All right. Welcome, everyone, and welcome to our very first Rotary District 7570 Pets webinar. <laughs> challenging times call for challenging solutions, so we're going to try to do pets with a webinar today. And we thank you all for joining. I'm Kathy Napier, a member of the Rotary Club of Warren County, Virginia and the Administrative Assistant Governor for District 7570. And I'm also a member of the district training team. And we're delighted you're joining us today. And hopefully we'll get a uh, abbreviated version of PETS, but enough of the important information, then have follow-up uh, breakout detailed sessions with your area governors afterwards. Um, Andrea Milliron, who is chair of the district training team, uh, she's a member of the Rotary Club of Roanoke downtown and a past assistant governor. Uh, unfortunately, she could not be with us today. Her mother is uh, suffering from a long illness and not doing very well. And Andrea is now taking on the role of a full-time caregiver. But we want to thank Andrea for all her hard work throughout this year and also last year as chair of the district uh, training team. She's done an incredible job and I know she would really want to be with us today if at all possible. But uh, do please keep Andrea and her family in your prayers. And if you don't mind, send her an email and tell her thanks for all her hard work. Thank you. I wanna briefly share with you the agenda, just so you can see this. I'm gonna share my screen. 
The agenda is sent out to everyone who registered by noon of yesterday. If you registered this morning, sorry you didn't get the link, but you'll see here, this is the link to all the files that we're going to be discussing today on pets. That's the, the agenda here. And if you have any issues with trying to log in or problems, this is Leslie Blevins cell phone number and Leslie is on the training team. Text her and she will help you with any technical problems. So just a brief discussion on the agenda very quickly. Uh, we'll have the introductions of our leadership team. Then we'll, uh, Nancy, our district governor elect, will give you an update on the visions for the upcoming year. We're delighted to have Rotary International Director Stephanie Urchik with us today. She's gonna to give you a great talk on, on Rotary and our growing and the, our vision. We'll talk about public image, membership, <coughs> foundation, and we have several foundation members, subcommittee members on the call. We'll also go through and talk about um, Gold Club. And then Cindy Hunter uh, from the Rotary Club of Woodstock will give a great presentation on leading volunteers, which is something we always need to keep in mind. And we've set aside to Q&A for the very end. One of the features that um, Zoom has is the Q&A. And you'll see on, on your tool ribbon, uh, mine, I'm on a laptop, so on the bottom of my screen. I'm told if you're on your tablet, it's the top of your screen, but there is a section called Q&A. If you have questions during anybody's presentation, please type those in to the Q&A. We'll be monitoring those and answering them in the Q&A section, or if we have time, we'll do it during the speaker section. Um, Stephanie will need to leave early because she has another rotary call, so we'll take questions immediately after her discussion uh, before she has to leave. Also, this is being recorded, so I want everybody to realize that, and we'll be able to post this on our YouTube uh, channel, also on our website. And now I'd like to turn it over briefly to uh, Nina Beth Thornton. Nina Beth is on the, the training team as well. She's a past administrative assistant governor also. And she's gonna give you an explanation on the resource manual that she has spent hours putting together for you. And it's, it's gonna be a great tool. So I'll bring it up on my screen um, and Nina Beth, and we can talk through that. Thank you, Kathy. Um, well, I had the easy part. Um, the content comes from um, important information from DGE Nancy and the district uh, committee chairs. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all for providing that information. We just thought that this resource manual would be a good housing place to store um, important information that um, everyone can use as a reference, just kind of a one-stop shop. Um, uh, to go to. Um, as as, Nance, as uh, Kathy mentioned, it's located on the training page and that's where um, if we need to update it to the most recent information um, will, will be. Um, right now we're obviously in version one um, and as new versions, if they are needed, um, we'll just put version two, three, four and so on. Um, Shouldn't be too much information, but from time to time, if we feel like that we need to, then we'll just um, update that document um, on there. And I'm trying to find, here we go. Are you seeing it, Nina Beth? I do, and I hope everyone does as well. This is just the title page, the first page. And if you scroll down to the next page, um, it's a list of the reference um, information. And there are links that are embedded into each one of these that link to pages following. So if we were to click on, for example, the 18 month calendar, that link would take you to the calendar. And then if you wanted to go back to that summary page, at the bottom of each page, there is a uh, go to reference page link. And that'll direct you back to the resource list. Um, it's a, as a PDF, so it also would be searchable. So hopefully this will be a great tool for you um, in the coming months. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nina Beth. And with that, I would like to introduce our current district governor, Tim Carter. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, I think uh, before I introduce Nancy, I would like to say, um, just for the people that are on this call, normally this process is about a nine month process that the training team begins in July of the previous year. And uh, they work for nine months getting ready to hold an in-person president-elect training seminar. Um, with what's been going on in the world, they've had to put this together over the course of the last, just the last few weeks. And I think uh, recognition needs to be given to Nancy, you, your leadership, uh, the leadership of your team, particularly Andrea, Nina Beth, Kathy Napier, and all those people that are involved in your training team and the hard work that they've done to put this together this morning. It says a lot about you guys as individuals, a lot about your, about your leadership and your commitment to our district. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'd like to uh, also recognize the people that have stepped up as leaders in their clubs, the president-elects, uh, taking on that leadership role. I know it's a big, it's, it's an opportunity for you. It's a challenge for you. I wanna thank you for what you do in your club. Thank your club for what they do in their community. And thank you all for what you're doing in the district and the world as well. And without, with that, I'd like to introduce our district governor-elect, Nancy Whitlock from the Rotary Club of Waynesboro. Nancy is a dear friend of mine, uh, a true Rotarian, and uh, a wonderful person to, <clears throat> to be friends with. Nancy, uh, I look forward to uh, helping you in any way that I can in the coming year. And I wanna thank you for everything that you've done for me and the support that you've given me. And I know that uh, we're all here to help you uh, make next year a success. So Nancy, uh, normally the district governor will sit at the back of the room during the PETS uh, training. So I'm gonna basically mute and get out of the way and wish you guys a great training at this webinar and your subsequent webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And um, I so value your leadership and your friendship. And uh, this has been a true team effort as it's gonna to continue to be. And I will say up front that I'm having some uh, internet connection instability. And I have noticed that if I drop off, I come right back. So I will try and get through what I have to say expeditiously. Um, I just want to welcome again our president elects and our president. Uh, President's nominee. Uh, thank you so much for being on this call today. Uh, even though it is an abbreviated PETS, uh, we are doing our best to get everything into a three-hour slot. Uh, I'd also like to welcome our out-of-district uh, President's elect. So happy to have you with us. I was really looking forward to giving you some in-person hospitality, but we will have to save that for another time. for uh, your service to your clubs in this coming year. Uh, it is my pleasure now uh, to give some brief introductions. I, I would love to be in a position where we could introduce all of our uh, area governors, particularly the new ones and all of our district committee chairs, but we will get to that at another time. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce the other two folks in the uh, district governor team. First, District Governor nominee, Tara McCall. Uh, she is from the Virgi Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee Rotary Club. Uh, she lives in Bristol. She is finishing her third year as AG in Area 12. And she was also our GSE team leader to India. Uh, and I so look forward to working with her. Uh, first, I would like to introduce our district nominee, and that is Kathy Cantor from Strasburg Road Club. Uh, she lives up in Middletown, Virginia. Uh, she is a past area governor of Area 2, and um, 
I will say she's had very unique on the job training. Um, she is the wife of past district governor Byron Brill, and I suspect that she was the real power force behind that district governor year. Okay, before I uh, lose my connection again, Kathy, if you could put up the first slide there. All right, bear with me for a second. I want to introduce our district to our incoming uh, Rotary International President, Holger Kanak. That slide is not coming up, is it, Kathy? Uh, it should. Give it a second here. It says I'm showing. Okay. There you go. Is it up? I see it. Great. No, I'm not there's a, there's okay, a I'm not seeing it, but if the rest of you Nancy, I would suggest that you um, call in on your landline so at least we can hear you and not have to uh, keep bumping in and out. Yeah, I have that. Um, I know. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think where to, is the, is the um, slide up? The slide's up with uh, President Holger and Suzanne. Okay. All right. Well, I will just say that um, President Holger um, was so impressive. It was my pleasure to meet him at International Assembly. And um, I think he is going to do a wonderful job in the coming year. And we will talk more about uh, his four key priorities in just a moment. So Nancy, I have his theme slide up. If the theme slide is up, Kathy, you'll have to prompt me what is on the screen. Okay. Um, as you all can see, um, I can't see it, but it is right behind me. Our theme for this Rotary year is Rotary Opens Opportunities. Uh, when this was unveiled at International Assembly, I thought, wow, this is, this is a great theme. Uh, but now life has changed. And I think the theme took on new meaning for me. We are truly, at this point in time, uh, called upon. And I think we lost Nancy again. Uh, we call upon it to sorry, uh, that think out of the box, that are creative, that are flexible, unique in our approaches. Um, we really need to be the ones to guide our clubs and uh, motivate and inspire them. Uh, we have got to think of new and different ways to uh, engage and care for our members, to introduce potential new members to Rotary, uh, to community, especially community and global service, and also to find ways to support our foundation, um, especially Polio Plus. Uh, the next slide, okay. and I will keep my fingers crossed on this. Uh, I was really impressed by these four messages from uh, President Holger. He would like, number one, uh, districts in collaboration with clubs to work on creating new club models, uh, certainly satellite clubs, but we would also like to focus on having more community-based Rotaract clubs. Um, every club 
should host at least one strategic planning meeting per year and in your Give Nancy a second, but uh, these are in your resource manual. Uh, you see, uh, you know, I I feel like I should call back in, but I can't find the number at this moment, so I'm just going to rush ahead and uh, say that strategic planning is important. Uh, number three, this is something that is very important to me. Although we do need to focus on. Uh, the number of members that we have in our clubs that is uh, we do need to focus on how carefully we select our members. Um, I like the uh, saying that you know you have to date for a while before you get married and I think the same is true in terms of finding uh, quality members for our clubs and making sure we have a good fit. And uh, for last but not least, we need to continue to support Polio Plus. I think because I am having this connectivity problem, um, I'm going to ask our PEs in particular to go to Manual and service plan that I put together. Uh, it will give you things that I'm focusing on for the coming year. Uh, and you will notice that uh, it is in a new format because it is guided by Rotary strategic priorities and objectives. Um, before you lose me again, I want to introduce our keynote speaker and then I'm going to dial back in. Uh, I am so very pleased to have with us today Dr. Stephanie. Stephanie's bio is in the resource mail, and you must read it because she is very impressive. She has done many wonderful things. Um, for those of you who know me well, I am not easily impressed, and uh, I am extremely impressed with Stephanie. Um, she is just an amazing speaker and an amazing Rotarian. She is from the Rotary Club of McMurray, Pennsylvania. She has uh, served Rotary in so many ways, served her community, and um, really wanted to out. Uh, she is the recipient of the Distinguished Service Award from the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International, and she has served as a foundation trustee. Uh, she was chair of the Rotary Strategic Planning Committee, which put together a wonderful product. And um, again, she has done so many things. Please read her bio. And now before I pop off again, I'm going to dial in on my phone. Uh, I give you our keynote speaker, Rotary International Director, Dr. Stephanie Yurchik. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. Good morning, family of Rotary in District 7570 and beyond. Before I start talking about my topic this morning, I just wanted to take a minute to tell you I have never been more proud to be a Rotarian than I am now. As Governor Tim suggested and uh, DGE Nancy suggested, we have had to, as an organization, in a very short amount of time, figure out how to keep the magic of Rotary happening. And we've done it. And here we are. So this is just an amazing time and I really am proud. Rotary has weathered so many things 
Um, Rotary as an organization went through the Spanish flu, went through world wars and other conflicts, a Great Depression, a recession. So this is just another uh, situation that Rotarians use their creativity and innovation to figure out how to keep doing good in the world. So it's wonderful to see all of you this morning. And um, District Governor-elect Nancy asked me to talk with you this morning about the whole concept of Growing Rotary. Growing Rotary is an initiative that really falls out of Rotary's strategic plan. So what I'd like to do this morning is share a little bit of information with you about why we even developed a strategic plan, another one, how we did that, and what it is. Every time I say that, I'm reminded of that Kevin Hart commercial, you know, when he's running around and it's, I think it's for a, a Chase Freedom credit card and he, he gets to the checkout line and he has this big thing and he says to the cashier, can you tell me what that is? So I always feel like I need to say a little bit more about what the plan is. Because in my experience as a Rotarian and as an educator, when you say the words strategic plan, people glaze over. And I can see some of you doing it right now. But not to worry, I'm gonna to try to bring it down, down to earth and help you understand how does this make sense for my club? Because that's really what our purpose was in developing a plan that would move our organization forward. So let me tell you why. And I think many of you will share this. You know, I have been in Rotary almost 30 years. And for 20, the last 20 of those 30 years, we have talked about 1.2 million members, 1.2 million members, 1.2 million members, and we keep talking about it. But finally, um, Rotary decided to create a joint committee, which means half of the membership came from Rotary International and half of the membership came from the Rotary Foundation. And as a joint committee, asked that body to look at our organization and figure out how to move us forward so that we would not only survive, but thrive as we move into the future. There are a lot of demographic and technological and social changes that are happening. So the committee took a look at all of that and decided up front that the best way, the best way to find out what our future should look like was to reach out to Rotarians. And that's exactly what we did. We started with Rotary's triennial survey. In our code of policies, Rotary is mandated to check with our membership every three years to find out what's on their mind and to ask serious questions. So that's how this planning began. We sent out the triennial survey to Rotarians, to non-Rotarians, to Rotaractors, to alumni, to Rylarians, to, to just about anybody we could reach when we had an email address. Some of you may have gotten it in your inbox and you may have recognized it because it was a survey that had pictures and it asked people to select who looks like a Rotarian. And it was kind of interesting to get the responses from different uh, geographies and different demographic groups because younger professionals pick completely different pictures than legacy Rotarians like myself. So we looked at all of that. And um, we, we looked at what people were saying. And from all of that data, um, we decided we need to do, do a little bit more. So we went around the world. We had a consulting partner who had offices on every continent. And we did focus group study. And we asked some more questions about, what do you see Rotary to be in the future? And again, talk to people who were in Rotary, people who left Rotary, people who've never been Rotarians, and again, gathered a lot of information. So we had all of this information that we then looked at, and from it, we found big chunks of, of um, ideas. And those statements became the basis for our vision statement. Before releasing it, before deciding what was the best statement, we once again 
tested all of the phrases all around the world to make sure that they translated and made sense in all regions of Rotary and in all languages and all geographies. And it's a very good thing we did because one of the initial phrases was something about Rotarians tackle the impossible. And when the Asian Rotarians looked at that, they said, absolutely not. Nobody can do the impossible. So that phrase transformed into create lasting change, which then became much more usable in the Asian culture. So our vision statement, of which you're aware, ended up being, together we see a world where people unite to take action and create lasting change around the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. So the vision statement was released. It was well received uh, around the world. So then the committee went back to the data that we had collected, all of it. We went a second time and we started to look for priorities and objectives with the same process. Uh, and again, we did focus groups and we did in-depth interviews and, and asked a lot of questions. And from that research, the four big priorities emerged for Rotary. And those four priorities, which you may have seen, uh, are we want to increase our impact, we want to expand our reach, we want to enhance participant engagement, and we want to increase our ability to adapt. And those four priorities became the foundation for Rotary's strategic plan. So let me talk a little bit about each one of those priorities and keep in mind that as a plan, it was written to be a corporate plan. So it's meant for Rotary International. So when we talk about increase our impact, you know, for a long time, Rotarians have been engaged in a lot of service that makes us feel good. And there is nothing wrong with that. But as an organization that moves forward and wants to attract more partnerships and more donors and more members, we need to become a little more strategic about how we measure impact. There's a difference between input, output, outcome, and impact. We're stuck pretty much in the first two and we have to start to move a little further to impact. I always talk about the fact that when Bill and Melinda Gates were approached by Rotary or heard about Rotary's efforts with polio eradication, they were immediately compelled to join our polio eradication efforts because we were able from the get-go to talk about the impact that Rotary has in polio eradication. We were able to say up front, how many thousands of children will be walking when polio is gone? How many billions of dollars will be saved in healthcare costs? So it was the impact statement that caught their attention right away. I also tell another story. You know, a couple of years ago, um, when President Ian Risley was in office, he asked all of us to plant trees. And what did we do? We all went out in our clubs and we planted trees, generally one tree for each member. And then we sent all of those numbers to Rotary. So we had the input and the output. How many trees did we plant? And Rotary had that number. The problem is we didn't take that further. We didn't investigate what did that action actually do to impact the environment? Did it change the level of CO2? Did it um, improve soil erosion? We really needed to take that a step further. So that's what increasing our impact is about. And under that priority, we're looking at things that can help us get to those impact statements. For instance, leveraging the legacy of how we deal with polio. I think some of you have already heard that our polio infrastructure is being used in countries around the world to help with the COVID-19 response. If you want to hear more about that, uh, there is a telethon that will be happening on Saturday morning, May the 2nd, 
at 10 o'clock Chicago time. And they're gonna talk about polio and our efforts and you know how we have leveraged this ability to, to get people mobilized and how that's being used for COVID-19. So I'd encourage you to listen to that telethon, tune in and, and hear more about that. Another issue under that priority statement is that we really need to focus what we're doing as an organization. Um, because, because we have always looked at our communities and our clubs and said, let's do things that support our community. All of our clubs are doing that because they're things that make us feel good. But Rotary has been very good about adding programs, doing more and more and more, but not necessarily sunsetting things or taking things away once they've met the objective. So we really need to get more focused on what our programs are. And um, one, one of the things that comes to mind there is, um, you know, we have some things like um, um, global rewards. Now I know recently in the month of March, many people have jumped onto to that system and looked at the fact that you could get a discount if you signed up for Zoom, and I think that's great. But over the course of that program, the amount of people who have, have actually used it to get some kind of discount is minimal compared to the cost. So we really need to evaluate programs like that to see, is, is that really something that's helping Rotary move forward? So increase our impact is about measuring and about moving what we're doing to that point where we can say, this is the impact it's having on the world. The second priority is about expanding our reach. Um, and this is about how we, how we look at the world and, and make ourselves more attractive and more appealing. The Grow Rotary Initiative comes directly under this one. You may have heard that we are investigating ways for people to come into Rotary that may not necessarily involve club membership. There is something called the non-participant club model that is currently a pilot project and it's happening in the Houston area and the Chicago area for a, a way for people to connect with Rotary without necessarily being in the club. One of the things that has happened as a result of us Zooming all over the place is that people who are not yet in Rotary or who have been in Rotary are coming back. And they're saying, wow, look at this. Look at this club meeting. This is really great. Um, so just by virtue of what we're doing with using technology, we're creating ways for people to connect with, with Rotary. Uh, the other thing under Expand Our Reach is um, we want to create an atmosphere in our environment that makes us more open and makes us more appealing. You know, there are, there are places in the world that have waiting lists to get into Rotary, which is absolutely astounding to me. Um, we had that once in North America and somehow that has slipped away. So we really need to evaluate um, our organization and, and make sure that we have that same kind of appeal. The third priority area is enhancing participant engagement. And this is the one that's really, really, really important. And, and well, they're all important, but this is the one that speaks to me personally. Um, this is where we need to support what's happening in our clubs so that our members are engaged. And bravo to you because um, I'm sure that a lot of you have figured out how to do these Zoom calls or other kinds of use other kinds of technologies to keep people engaged or created phone systems, buddy systems to keep checking on members. That's so important. This is a time right now where we need to make sure that we are engaging and keeping our members close to Rotary. One of the things that happens when a person makes a decision to become involved with Rotary is that they look at Rotary and ask the question, 
what's in it for me? Sometimes people come to Rotary because they want fellowship. Sometimes they come because they want networking. Sometimes they want service, or perhaps they want to be mentored, or maybe they're looking for professional development. Whatever the reason that they're coming, as clubs, we need to make sure that we have a way to find that out and that we are answering that. Because when people don't get what they're expecting, you know what they do, they take off. So we need to move our focus and, and look at our club experience and make sure that we are answering the very reason people want to engage and be part of Rotary, want to make sure that we're de delivering that for people. One of the um, wonderful things that has come out of Rotary in the past six months is a uh, partnership that we have with Toastmasters International. The very uh, first two courses that are going to be co-branded, Rotary and Toastmasters, are being uh, released in early May. And these are courses that will be available for Rotarians and Rotaractors, and they are the typical Toastmaster topics. Some of you may have uh, been involved with Toastmasters, public speaking, leadership development. So that's, that's a great resource and a great tool for helping to enhance engagement for those people who were looking for professional development. So in enhancing participant engagement, again, we're looking at ways to make the experience of Rotary more appealing uh, so that we can not only attract members, but retain them. You know, I mentioned Ian Risley's uh, year as president. You know, in that year, 1718, Rotary set a record. In that year, we brought in more Rotarians than ever in our history. That's the good news. The bad news is that same year, we set a different record. We lost more Rotarians than ever in our history. That's not a good trend to have. So that suggests very loudly and very clearly that retention is an issue. So again, our, our club experience and the way we engage people um, will have a direct result on, on how they decide or if they decide to stay with our clubs. And the final one, oh my, the Bravo one, increase our ability to adapt. Oh my gosh, we're in overdrive here. Um, this priority is about building a culture of risk and innovation and um, being willing to try things. You know, the mantra, oh, we've always done that, you know, this, this way, why should we change? That's out the window. Um, uh, this whole um, health and economic pandemic is a direct evidence that we need to try different things. We need to do things differently. Um, under this priority, we, we also are taking a look at Rotary's governance and structure, and we're hoping that clubs will do that at the club level too, making sure that how you have organized your club leadership and governance is really what needs to, to be in place to support the mission of your club. At the RI level, we're looking at things like our committees. Uh, for instance, a year ago, we had almost 70 rotary committees. Are you kidding me? Those committees cost money because committee members come from all over the world. So there's travel and lodging and all sorts of expenses there. So we really started to look at streamlining the committee structure and looking at where can we combine committees? Where can we sunset committees? Where are there places where the work of a committee is no longer necessary? And can we just eliminate it? And I'm happy to say that in the past two or three board meetings, we have taken those steps. And so that number is below 70 now. Um, and it will continue to happen that, that we get rid of committees or streamline. Um, and that's a step in looking at our governance. In this priority is also the idea that, you know, so many of our leadership roles have been built on length of service. 
and that's really not the, the, the best strategy. If we want more diversity in thought, more diversity in gender and race and age and all of that, we really need to look at um, skill-based leadership. And so uh, the organization is looking at how do we balance um, rotary depth of knowledge with skill development and training to find the best leaders and, and to open it up for people who may not have had a chance otherwise. When I was on the strategic planning committee, there was a member of the committee who was from Africa. And he said, you know, in my, where I am in my club, between me and the president of Rotary, there are 29 different levels. I'll never live that long to be president of Rotary. So it was a wake up call for all of us uh, on the committee to take a look at that particular element and build it into increasing our ability to adapt. So those are the, the four priorities and objectives from the corporate level. What I'm gonna ask you to do now um, is really something to engage you. Um, remember, this, this at the corporate level will not move our organization forward. It's got to go down to our clubs. You're coming in as a club president and you heard Governor-elect Nancy say that Holger our president next year wants us all to have a strategic meeting, at least one in our clubs. So I'm going to give you an idea here of how you can handle having one of those meetings. So everybody on the call, if your birthday is in January, February, or March, I want you to look at priority number one, which is increase our impact. And I want you to write down where you are, wherever you are, what that could mean at your club. How does that translate for something at your club? If your birthday is in April, May, or June, I want you to look at number two, and that's the one that says expand our reach. So at your club, what, what does that mean for your club? How does your club take that priority and, and make it come to life? If your birthday is in July, August, or September, you look at number three, enhanced participant engagement. How does that priority make sense at my club? What will my club do with that priority? And finally, if your birthday is in October, November, or December, I want you to look at priority four, which is increase our ability to adapt and you guys kind of have an easier one because we're in the middle of that. But I want you to think about how does that relate to my club? What could my club do? What should my club do? And while you're doing that, I'm going to ask Kathy if she'll put the priorities um, back up on the screen so that you can refer to them. And I'm going to talk for about 40 seconds. And then after that, I'm going to ask uh, for one person. We'll just get one from each of the groups to share what you came up with in terms of how your club is going to translate the strategic priorities and objectives and what's that going to mean at your club. All right, so everybody, um, you have your marching orders. We have group one looking at increase our impact. Group two is looking at expanding our reach. Group three at enhancing participant engagement and group four at increasing our ability to adapt. Okay, so I'm going to ask um, Kathy as moderator and anybody else who can see all the participants, uh, whoever puts their hand up first, group one, the people that looked at increase our impact, you January, February, and March birthday people, who wants to share one of the things that you came up with as how that is going to translate at your club. So Kathy, if you could unmute the first person who raises a hand and wants to share. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I think, uh, let's see, I can still share my screen. Okay. Arthur Sheehan, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Uh, are we so fun um, enhance participant engagement correct 
Well, we want to increase our impact, but go ahead, Arthur. Tell us what you did with enhanced participant engagement. Well, I'm thinking about it. Um, I think that we have to get out into the community more and, and think about how we're going to be more, have more of an impact in the community. And um, I'm just thinking about it. I don't have any, any set goals right now, but I think that we need to do, we need to focus on that. My birthday is in July. So enhanced <laughs> okay. participant engagement is mine. Okay. All right. So you're, um, you're thinking about to enhance participant engagement to really look at um, ways to, to, to look at your community and to see what people are interested in and creating an environment in your club that will give that to them. So that's great. Okay. Um, back to increase our impact. Do we have anybody from the first group who'd like to raise their hand and share what they think that priority means for their club? January, February, or March birthdays. First person to raise your hand. Kathy, do we have anybody? I have Jeffrey Nitz. Okay, Jeffrey. So sorry about this. I, I was responding to number three as well. So okay. I'll step back and you can do that uh, respond to increase our impact. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Anybody increase raise your hand? Yeah, increase our impact. Who who has something from increase our impact? What does that mean for your club? All right, I have two hands raised, so let me see if I can find them. All right, I have Kim Ool. Kim? Yeah, um, our club has never um, participated in a global grant. So um, I think one of the ways that we could uh, possibly increase our impact, and it's with Stock Club, by the way, is by um, <clears throat> trying to participate in, on a global level and a global grant to um, both um, uh, increase our impact and also engage our members. Great. Okay. I appreciate that, that idea. And you're right. You know, when when we get our clubs um, to think outside of what they've normally done, that means we're, we're getting bigger and you'll be able to, to show your Rotarians what their, what their involvement in that global grant did. And um, so there's a great story there. So yes, you can measure impact. Okay, let's look at our second priority, expanding our reach. Our April, May, and June birthdays. Who, who has some ideas about what that means in your club? Just raise your hand. Raise your hand so Kathy can see it. Don't be shy, people. <laughs> How will you grow and diversify your membership? How are you going to increase your openness and appeal? What kinds of things will you do to build awareness of your impact and your brand? Anybody? I'm not seeing any raised hands. Okay. Uh, okay. Let, let, I've, got one. I've got one. You got one? Okay. Let's see. All right. I'm trying to find that person. My screen's being slow here. Bear with me for a sec. All right, I have Tom Estep. Okay, Tom. I'm trying to unmute you, Tom. Can I've got you. There you are. Hi, Tom. Um, we are a very small club, but I think that one of the things that I've thought about doing as a president-elect is to challenge my members, uh, essentially a power of one for each member to invite um, another member out of the community or someone out of the community that might be interested and try to at least, um, you know, if everybody does that, we would double the size of our club. And then um, 
secondary as far as building awareness of our impact and brand, we've I've been, uh, I've presented a, a, a plan to our club that we're trying to work out what we've got, uh, especially with the pandemic and everything, trying to attract uh, foot traffic to some of our uh, local businesses. So like a shop local type of um, idea where we have a door hanger that would have um, Different kind of different restaurants or whatever that uh, wanted to buy into a project, uh, where they would give like a discount card or something like that. But um, trying to help our small businesses in our small community uh, be able to stay open and, and address the, the impact that all this has had, especially on them. Try to keep those businesses open. So I think those two things: one, um, would increase our membership, and then two, also uh, expose our brand, so to speak, uh, to a larger outreach in the community. And we've talked about the fact of uh, partnering with other uh, like-minded groups uh, to help volunteer to go hang these, because we're talking about hanging a thousand door hangers on a thousand houses. It's going to take a, a few people to do that. And so those are some of the ideas that uh, we're kicking around at, at uh, our club. Okay. Thanks, Todd. And you know, you reminded me of something. Um, every one of us is on the membership committee. Sometimes when I'm with the club, I'll say, how many people do you have on your membership committee? And the club will say, well, we have a chair and we have three people. No, the answer is everybody is on the membership committee. We should all be reaching out and inviting people to our meetings, including these that are online. You know, when um, we have our zone calls on Friday and Monday, there's generally at least one non-Rotarian on that call because I've invited that person because I want them to see the magic of how we're connecting. People are craving connection now, and that's what we do. So you're right, Todd, you know, if every member um, took that responsibility seriously, we could generate more interest and appeal. Let's look at our last one real quickly, and that's the group, uh, the October, November, and December birthdays, you were looking at increase our ability to adapt. So is there somebody who has a suggestion how that would work in your own club? Raise your hand and Kathy will unmute you if you'd like to share your idea. I have uh, Beth Waller. Okay, Beth. Hi, everyone. This is Beth Waller. I am the president-elect of the uh, Rotary Club of the Northern Shenandoah Valley, the newest club in Area 1. And I think our ability to adapt is something um, very important to reach out to as many people as we can. And I think a, lot, a good way to do that is to have social media initiatives and that sort and to have collaborative initiatives. So my club has created, I've actually um, spearheaded a new campaign that's on April 29th. It's called Rotary Fast. And um, I'm planning on other ones as well. These are um, fundraising events that are very easy to set up as a Facebook event and they're virtual and any club can set it up and duplicate it and raise money for causes close to their heart. So this event is on April 29th. If you wanna check it out, it's rotaryfast.com, Clark County Front Royal and my club are participating right now. It's not too late if your clubs want to join, but I think the way to adapt is to create things that can be duplicated for each club and share and really um, let people know what we're doing so that we can duplicate successful initiatives in other areas so we're not reinventing the wheel and work together. And this is an actual um, event that can be literally international. Any club in the world can easily set up a Facebook event in 30 minutes and raise money for their initiative. This one is $10 and you pledge to fast for the day or $20 and you don't have to fast. But um, it's just an amazing way, I think, um, to connect us all and to duplicate our efforts so that we can have the most impact and most adaptivity to um, give each other feedback of what's working and what's not by, by sharing initiatives. So I'll stop, but please check out rotaryfast.com and you can learn about it. And it's gonna be developing for next year so that we can continue to raise money through this endeavor and then celebrate them next April 29th, what all of our clubs have done. So stay tuned and reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. That's a great idea. And again, an example of how we can use our creativity to do the magic of Rotary differently. So thank you all for participating in that. That's, a, that's an example of something you can do in your own club. At a club meeting, you can 
split your club into four groups and or, or or maybe use one meeting a month and just focus on one priority but get input from your own members because when people have an opportunity to participate and share ideas you'll get more buy-in and when you get buy-in people will behave and act in the manner that will push you forward you know in this country we have a saying that people don't wash rental cars because they don't own them. So give people an opportunity to own some of the direction that you want to see your club take as president and you'll have more buy-in. I have exactly one minute left. So if you have any questions that you'd like to post in the, in the um, Q&A pane, um, Kathy will monitor that and let me know. Um, if you don't have questions today, I'm very easy to find. My information is on our website. Uh, as well as in DACDB, or you can simply ask uh, District Governor-elect Nancy and she'll put you in touch with me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have right now. So if anybody has questions, just type it in in the Q&A. Stephanie, you did such a great job covering everything. <laughs> no one has questions. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're thank welcome. You. Have a great rest of the morning. I'm sorry I can't stay on with you, but I have another call that I need to jump on. So I'll see you all. Thank you so much, time. Stephanie. We all really right. appreciate it. Bye now. Thanks. And next up, our next uh, presenter is Amber Wilborn. Amber is, good morning, Amber. Good morning. <laughs> Amber is the president of our e-club, the Roanoke e-club. And she is the chair, upcoming chair of our public image committee for the district. And she's gonna to speak to you today on telling your Rotary story. Amber. Do you have my slides available? I'm gonna pull them up just a second here. Okay. While she's doing that, I just wanted to say good morning to everybody. I wish I could see everybody's faces. That's the worst part of all of this. And I miss hugs. That's what I keep telling on our um, eClub meetings, which runs on Zoom. So I'm pretty used to Zoom and um, this comes easy to me. But I do miss face-to-face -face, uh, talking and getting to know people. So as Kathy said, my name is Amber Wilborn. I am the president of the District's E-Club here in Roanoke, Virginia, your incoming public image chair. Um, I would like to introduce uh, your public image team. It's not my team, it's yours. And um, I have the support of LaShonda Delavic, who is the current assistant Rotary public image coordinator, or we call her ARPIC, for Zone 33. And she is my boss, pretty much. Uh, the rest of the crew is Tracy Bledo the of the Bedford Club. Her strengths are more than just Polio Plus. Joey Cornwell of the Rocky Mount Club. His strength is social media, and he won first place in the district at uh, District Conference this past year. Lydia Heatwall of the Rockingham County Rotary Club, and her strengths are creativity and new ideas. And Gary Norris of the Salem Rotary Club. His background is in marketing. This upcoming year's presidential theme is Rotary Opens Opportunities, which can be seen at the bottom of each slide. The phrase is paired visually with the silhouette of three open doors, one blue, another gold, and the third is bright Rotaract pink. The incoming RI president chose the theme for its aptness. He said it's easy uh, to translate in every language. Think to yourself, does my club have a social strategy in place? We want to aim to make Rotary irresistible. One way to do that is sharing your Rotary story or your club's Rotary story. What is a Rotary story? Well, it's how did you find out about Rotary? What is your first Rotary function? Was it a fundraiser, an after hours gathering, networking? Uh, when did you join Rotary? Uh, and your Rotary moment that made the biggest impact to you, which is my favorite stories. 
Rotary is the brand we are all associated with, and we are that brand's ambassadors. We are the voice of the organization. We are bigger than the wheel. We are Rotary. You, me, your club. It is how others see us, and others, I mean, non-Rotarians. I would like to see Rotarians using their voice and visual identity to make Rotary look like something that a non-Rotarian just has to be a part of. And really, at the end of the day, we all just want to do some good in the world. Tell your Rotary story. Yes, you. We are here to help you because we hear a lot how. We plan to have a step-by-step -step guide for you, your clubs, and its members to give you the tools to assist you with your social media needs. I will elaborate on this shortly. There will be so much more offered at CTT. We also have the informer. The informer is not successful without your stories. I want so many stories from you and your clubs that I have a backlog and I can continuously share what your club is doing. It also helps keep um, every club in the area engaged with one another and let each other know what's going on. Last, we'll, we'll be emphasizing the polio or the plus and polio plus, like Nancy said. It is her passionate, and she is very passionate about Polio Plus, especially all that Rotary has done and will continue to do. And a lot of people ask what the plus is, and hopefully throughout the year, we'll be able to highlight that even more to you. But the plus is other diseases that we're vaccinating for, such as diphtheria, measles, and whooping cough, just to name a few. Okay, next slide. Next slide. I'm trying, it's slow, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's okay. <laughs> you totally got this. Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, no, it's the next one after that. <laughs> All right. There we go. I'm out of order somehow, but that's okay. Look at these fun pictures, and it's th these pictures are not a meeting. These are um, people of action, and it is networking, social events, and service projects. Fun photo at Carillion Hospital after wrapping presents for patients, a service project involving painting, the once a year tea party that LaShonda organizes each year. Now this year we did something special and all the ladies wore purple and she had these incredible tote bags made for each of us. And so this was a great photo op. Wood for Warmth is a service project done by the Rocky Mount Rotarians. Club After Hours Socials, as you see here, the, the Stuart Rotary Club Fair. Oh my goodness. I want to be a part of that. Prepping Strawberries for the Strawberry Festival and Roadside Cleanup. There are many more opportunities to showcase your clubs. These are just a few examples. Okay, next. Where will it go? Is that where you wanna go, Amber? I think so. <laughs> We're gonna make it work, aren't we? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, public image can help assist you in telling your rotary story and uh, by the way, you are the Rotary brand. Facebook is a great and free way to advertise what you and your clubs are doing. Utilize your social media to tell your Rotary story. There will be more on social media in our CTT webinar. Now more than ever, invite the public to your Zoom meetings and go live on Facebook during the meeting for the public to get a taste of what you and your club are doing. Uh, we plan on do, doing a brain dump for all of you, which is we're gathering how to's um, to help you utilize things like Facebook, um, possibly Instagram, also use a system called Canva and other ways um, that will help you to utilize telling your story more. And also we're, we're going to do a how to on um, myrotary.org, which is where the brand center is. I want you to show our non-Rotarians how fun Rotary is and how amazing our causes and passions are. And you can do this by
by simply moving outside of your comfort zone and not necessarily taking pictures of your meetings or big checks all the time. Get, go and move out, take pictures of social events that you're at with Rotarians and non-Rotarians, tag one another and tag your club. This will get the word out. Also, you can, um, we're gonna do how-tos for Facebook when you can go live during fundraisers or service projects. This gives you a voice to what is happening live and for you to showcase it on Facebook. That's also another tra attraction of like, oh, what are they doing? I wanna be a part of that. Like we said, we're making Rotary irresistible. Okay, next. I'm trying. <laughs> I know you are, you're doing great. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay, this is, um, this is my heart. So I wanted to tell you guys that Rotary is, since you are the brand, it is so good to wear Rotary, anything Rotary, whether it is a pin, whether it is a purse, which I have, or a sweater or a t-shirt. Rotary is, is very recognizable worldwide. And these are just a few examples. Club, I love getting other clubs t-shirts too because I wore a uh, Blue Ridge New Gen t-shirt when I was in Africa recently. But these are just a few examples. You can go to Russell Hampton, your club can do something special for themselves, or hopefully maybe in the future our district will do something again like the swag shop. But you will not believe how much wearing Rotary starts a conversation. I have met so many Rotarians from around the world and even here in the United States, just when I've been in the airport wearing something Rotary. I think I had my backpack on from Georgia's year and somebody stopped me and said, oh my gosh, are you a Rotarian? I was like, yes. And it just started a whole different conversation. Um, we even wearing the Rotary pins. People will start asking you questions. Um, I had a full on conversation at a rest stop because I was wearing the sweatshirt that says believe there is good in the world. And I do believe her and her husband ended up joining a Rotary Club soon after that, just because we had stopped and had a conversation about Rotary. Okay, I'm next. Okay. That's the end of my presentation. Like I said, folks, we're gonna give you a lot of assistance, um, especially trying to find little things like, which is on my last slide here, to help you post on your club's page or even on your personal page about your club. And make it fun. You can always find something fun in your search engine um, on the internet. Keep it clean, folks but you can always find something fun to draw attention from the public. And you can think of quirky things, cute things, encouraging things, quotes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Paul Harris quotes that you can find on Google that are, you know, highlighted with pictures in the background that you can use. But you have totally got this. This is a little encouragement that you can do this, you can break away from your comfort zone and try something new to really attract the public. And I think that's what we're going for this year is we want people to feel like they just have to be a part of this, that it is they're craving to be a part of Rotary and that they're craving to do a lot of good in the world, especially now more than ever. Also, I wanted to say that since you are doing Zoom meetings and you're not meeting regularly in a building or somewhere else, go live during your Zoom meetings or invite somebody to come on to your meeting and just so they can hear the speaker or even see other faces. They don't necessarily, they won't feel anxious to come to a club meeting. All they have to do is pop onto a Zoom meeting, see what we're all about, and that's it. I really appreciate you guys' time. This is my information. I look forward to receiving your stories for the informer, all of you. And um, my goal this year is to have so many stories that I don't get to finish them up by the end of the year. I love to hear what other clubs are doing. I encourage you to like other clubs' pages just so you can 
get a feel for what others are doing in your area or outside of your area, because we are seriously all in this together. And I also encourage you to talk with your area governors about doing collaborative service projects in your area. That usually is very helpful and that draws attention too. And I think that's all of my encouragement for the day. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you, Amber. That was terrific. You can tell her passion, everybody, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And if anybody has questions, please type them into the Q&A section and we can ground back up afterwards with Amber on that. So next, we have Andy Van Hook. Andy is a member of the Harrisonburg Club, and he is our Zones Assistant Coordinator for Membership. And so Andy, we're delighted to have you uh, join us today, and I will start putting your slides up here. All right, excellent. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate that. Appreciate the opportunity to talk with all of you today. And Amber, I am wearing my rotary pin this morning, so I'm representing for you. Um, and I love that pink jacket, too. <laughs> thanks. Um, so uh, there is a club membership plan in your packet to help guide you this year. We will not be going over that today. However, I will be available to help you in the upcoming weeks if you get stuck. Um, I won't be suggesting a membership drive, which gives clubs an ar artificial numbers boost. I won't be telling you to offer incentives or discounted dues. We're going to go back to the basics. The, these five steps will help you retain members and attract new ones. The goal of these steps is to get quality members over quantity of members. <laughs> you can go to the next side, slide. So this little bug has caused quite an upheaval in our world. Uh, this is the COVID-19 bug virus. Our Rotary Clubs will feel the ripple effects of this. How are your, our clubs responding now and in the coming months will determine what Rotary looks like in our communities. Now, with all the doom and gloom out of the way of missed meetings and not seeing each other and service opportunities um, that we aren't doing right now, um, with that doom and gloom out of the way, let's talk about how we can grow our clubs. You can go to the next slide. This is one of my favorite quotes by Walt Disney. Times and conditions change so rapidly that we must keep our aim constantly focused on the future. So the question I would ask you is, what are we doing to aim our clubs towards the future? Next slide. The key component for me is the word engage. It starts and ends with this word. We need to engage with our members. Merriam-Webster defines it as, to hold the attention of or to induce to participate. How many of us took for granted the ability for our clubs to meet in person? I know, I think, our, I'm pretty certain our club did. How many of us forgot the importance of great programming? We schluffed it off to say, oh, we're going to have this speaker or, oh, we forgot. So, Steve, why don't you come up and tell us what you're doing again? Um, right now, great programming, um, in your zoom meetings creates engagement, helps to attract other people, helps to keep your members, um, engaged with your club because the worst thing that we have right now, especially the way rotary has typically been built on meeting in person is the space. So engaging, uh, your club members is going to be key going forward for not just your members to retain them, but for future prospects. So uh, next step uh, is Zoom. Hopefully most or all of you are uh, doing Zoom meetings, if not at your regularly scheduled time at some uh, similar time or um, opportunity that your club can meet. Um, you know, regularly scheduled meetings will help keep people in their routine. You know, it's much like a gym membership, right? Is that once you stop, you know, you can have it. And then once you stop going, you kind of go, eh, do I really need that? Um, we don't want people to find or feel that way about Rotary. So we need these virtual meetings right now more than ever. 
So using a platform like Zoom or other video conferencing solutions can help with that. This allows your members to meet face to face, to see their friends, and to re-engage with Rotary. Many of your members are seeking this connection. So if you haven't done it yet, you need to do it. I mean, I was really impressed. I was uh, questioning whether our club, the Harrisonburg Club, um, would have good attendance. And because um, we have a larger club, 130-ish members. And we had over 40 members attend our first Zoom meeting. And I was really impressed with that. That was actually significantly higher than I was anticipating. So it just showed me that people are seeking that engagement. So don't miss that opportunity to engage your club members. Next slide, please. So again, great programming is key. Why great programming? Good content attracts people, uh, makes them talk, which attracts more people. So I'm not sure how many of you have seen The Tiger King, but that's probably a really good example on Netflix right now as it, it got kind of uh, this uh, early following that people started posting about on social media. Then all of a sudden, everybody was posting about it seemingly on social media. Um, it, whether it's good content or not is, uh, is debatable. However, um, there was some value there that attracted other people. So having good programming for your Zoom meetings um, and, not, and, and when your meetings go back to regular meetings in person, um, it's going to help. It's going to help attract more people. It's going to keep your club members engaged and it's going to have more opportunity to attract new people. And right now, there's never been a better opportunity to up your programming game. Get in touch with leaders in your community and have them present on the actions they're taking right now to keep your community safe. Get the mayor. Get your city council members. Get people who are actively helping your community because um, they're looking to, to get the message out as well. So it's a great opportunity to connect. Reach out to a senator or a congressperson. At, seriously, ask Holly Berry to speak. I mean, right now, everybody is essentially sitting in their homes with probably not a lot to do. Or, well, they're working, but they may, not, they may have some time. So everyone is stuck at home. So now's the time to reach out and, and shoot for those speakers that you may never get to have in person at your club meeting. So think big and ask, because the answer is always no until you do ask. Next slide, please. Step three is invite others to the virtual meeting. When you provide great content during troubling time, our clubs can become the rallying point for our communities. So use this time to invite others. And one word of caution with this is, if you take this as an opportunity to quote unquote, sell Rotary membership to your guests and Rotary in general, you'll likely lose them forever. Use this as an opportunity to bring them in and see what we're doing, hear what we're talking about. And, and it's a slow way to invite them to engage with us um, because no one wants to be sold to. None of us want to be sold to. We want to feel like we make the decision on our own based on the experience that we're having. So create the experience of engagement and invite people and you'll attract them and want to become membership and increase your membership. You know, the goal of opening up your meetings is to engage our communities. And if you have great content, great speakers who are speaking on, you know, even local or regional issues, local community folks will want to participate in that. Next slide, please. Step four, share. Share volunteer opportunities for other organizations in your community. Now is a time where there is a lot of work being done for volunteer organizations, whether it's food banks or United Way or homeless shelters, um, you know, hospitals, medical care, uh, who, who, need, or who are in need. And Rotarians are, are awesome about stepping up to help. So now's a time where we're using our networks of just sharing these opportunities to the community can help those organizations. This is a great opportunity to build goodwill and better friendships with other organizations in your community. So do so with nonprofits and other volunteer organizations. Offer support, rally people, um, figure out a way that you can connect uh, in your community in this, in this trying time. Next slide, please. 
Step five, it's time to rethink your club. If your club looks and feels like it did 30 years ago, it's time for a change. There's a saying in marketing uh, and public relations, don't let a good crisis go to waste. Now's the time to take a critical look at everything you do as a club, from your club meetings to service projects to traditions. Take this opportunity to reimagine what Rotary would look like if you could start over in 2020. Many have talked about it. I've heard the conversations over the years. But right now is the opportunity for you to do that because it's been completely shaken up. We haven't been able to meet in person and do a lot of the things that we normally do. So how can we take this opportunity to reimagine what Rotary looks like in our communities, in our clubs, and what it means. That step alone will start, that's a long-term step for membership. The short-term step with that is it helps to retain your current members, but the long-term part of that is when the community starts to see that Rotary is different. Rotary is not what it used to be. It's not the old boys club anymore. It's the opportunity for them to go, wow, they're really, really providing true value in our community. So that's the long game is to attract those who have written off Rotary. Next slide, please. So remember, everything starts with engagement. We have to engage our members. We have to engage the community. It's really important. So keep this as the focus of your clubs, when it, especially when it comes to membership, when you're making decisions, Will this program engage our members? Does this service project engage our community? Does singing before the meeting engage our guests? Ask these hard questions because the engagement factor is what's gonna grow your club through this crisis and after this crisis. Engagement is the starting point of growth. And finally, act now. Don't wait until your term begins, act now. Want a better club? Act now. Want to redefine Rotary in your community? Act now. Action changes things. The urgency is real. We are people of action. Act now. Thanks for your time and attention. And uh, throw questions in the Q&A box and I'll happily answer them. Or, and I'll stick around to answer them at the end. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andy. Really appreciate that. And it's, it's, he's absolutely right. Now is the time we have opportunity given to us. Rotary opens opportunity. So let's take advantage of those. Thanks, Andy. Next, I'm going to um, bring on past district governor, Vivian Krimble. Vivian is a member of the Tri-Cities Clubs in Tennessee, and she is our District Rotary Foundation Coordinator, and she's going to speak on foundation and then introduce some of her other committee members as well. So Vivian, I'll pull up your slides. So give me just one second. Good. Well, thank you, Kathy, for the introduction, and uh, this is a time of thank you. Uh, certainly, and I want to take this opportunity with 133 of you on this webinar currently. Thank you for your support uh, to your foundation in, a, in just so many variety of different ways. Uh, you, you do support the foundation and we so appreciate it. Uh, today, uh, we of course will abbreviate uh, uh, with our 11 steering committee, uh, foundation steering committee members. Uh, this is a phenomenal group of experts uh, to help us uh, go through our, our foundation uh, and help us stay on track, answer those questions for us that we might have. They guide us and facilitate us. And they also are ones who are experts in their field so they can help you maybe with your presentations to your, to your club members call on them, see what they can do to help you. They may know someone in your area uh, that has a great presentation as well. Uh, and always remember in your club meetings to feature now and again something about foundation, if you would. 
Today, you're going to meet only a few of our members, and I'm going to take the, uh, the lead first, and I will go ahead and, and talk to you about some of the, um, present, uh, the presentation that some of our committee uh, members would have given you today. I'll just hit the highlights of what they've shared, and then you can ask questions, or certainly I want to encourage you for sure to go to that resource uh, manual uh, that Nina Beth has put together, which is a phenomenal resource tool for you. So please utilize that. Uh, we will be uh, going through, and Kathy, go to the next uh, slide, please. We'll be going through the, um, uh, these are your steering committee members uh, uh, and the variety of different um, uh, departments that they uh, lead. And we are so very, very pleased to have each and every one of them because they certainly do have a lot of expertise in their field. And they also have a great committee uh, that goes behind them, uh, that is behind them to, to support. Next slide, please. The first one that I want to talk about or bring to your attention, of course, is in Polio Now. You've already heard about it. And Tracy Bledo is the chair this year. Uh, Tracy has been chair in the past, uh, then took a little sabbatical and stayed on the committee, but we're having her lead that again uh, this coming year, during your year. And we remember, and she reminds us, that ending polio uh, is the still the number one issue for a polio-free world. And you heard that uh, certainly in the very beginning from Nancy in the strategic plan uh, that at Holger, our president-elect uh, Holger wants that for us to host a, a world polio day if we, uh, if we would. And um, the goals for this coming year for you, and this just take this down, your goals are $40 a, 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 a club member or $1,500 per the club. Next slide, please. Now, we're not saying to you, everybody dip into your pocket and pay uh, the 40 or the or 1500 from the club, but we are saying be creative. You have an opportunity to raise together the funds, and we've had a lot of fun in our, in our um, club raising funds for uh, the polio uh, uh, eradication and the end polio donations. One of the things that we do is we've gone to uh, paint for a purpose and we've had uh, individuals who are not Rotarians to come. That's part of that membership again, uh, leading them into uh, opportunities to be with us as we raise money uh, for a particular cause. And this was for uh, the polio so you can raise money with the greatest, uh, world's greatest meal. Um, uh, Tracy, uh, actually her husband, uh, has baked cupcakes and they have auctioned them off. And Tracy's raised a lot of money, uh, the both of them have, for this. And also invite polio speakers to come uh, and um, then maybe charge for that just a little bit. You all have the great ideas. I'm just uh, mentioning a few. And you can see here that there's some pictures of, of, of some of our Rotarians who were in action on some of these. Does Tracy, do you have any comments that you wanted to also include in this? Kathy, have we heard from Tracy? I'm not, I'm not seeing her on the uh, participant. Okay. okay, we'll go to the next slide and we'll, we'll come back to that if she raises her hand. All Thank right. you. Thank you. The next uh, committee is the endowment, those district scholarships, and Gary Chrisman is, going, is chairing that this coming year. And you know what that's all about. That's our, we have the greatest endowment, our district does. And we are only one uh, of a few in the, uh, in the uh, rotary world. Uh, so, and we support um, the scholars. This is the one where we support the scholars, the endowment scholarships. Uh, and these are managed by Gary and his team and the Rotary Foundation. We work together because our money is housed there. And there are two major endowments that we have, uh, the Skelton Endowment, and that helps us sometimes to be able 
uh, to uh, offer scholarships to three individuals and, and the uh, Reed Jones uh, Endowment uh, Scholarship. We usually can raise uh, opportunities to have one scholar for that. Next slide, please. The Skelton Fella is the uh, location here, uh, and Gary will be helping with that. And that's that $500 that you can uh, become a, 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 a Skelton Fellow. And that's for those scholarships uh, for graduate level students who want to major in an area that's related with our six uh, areas of focus. Uh, just be sure and contact Gary uh, the, the brochures are, uh, I believe he's put them on in the resource manual uh, for your um, opportunity to see those and also other additional uh, information there. Next slide, please. The Skelton Jones Scholarship with Tamara Rodnauer, uh, she is chair and has been uh, for a couple of years and does a phenomenal job, she and her committee. And they're the ones who uh, uh, you could say that uh, Gary raises the money and, and Tamara helps to spend that money. Uh, they, they are the interview, uh, they do the interviewing and the selection arm of the, of the scholarships. Remember our, our scholarship, uh, our participants are interviewed and then there are many, many opportunities to help them uh, go through completing the global grant application uh, and this is a $35,000 scholarship for a year for a graduate study in a country that is outside the native country. Uh, she also helps uh, in completing the reports because we have to do a follow-up report, a final report too at the end of, that, of their year. Next, next slide, please. Uh, the call to action that Tamara is asking for is to remember that uh, your clubs right now uh, to encourage your candidates that you might have that are planning uh, that you're planning to endorse to help identify they need to identify the graduate uh, schools that they want to uh, attend and begin completing that scholarship application and remember that June the 30th uh, is the uh, in time that you have to submit the club needs to submit their endorsement and the candidate needs to submit their application. That's June the 30th uh, of this year. Next slide, please. We'll move to plan giving, plan giving and major gifts and Dana Guthrie is going to chair this year, but we wanted to remind you that Dana is our go-to in the district for all things plan giving and major gifts, but she also has a partner from the Rotary Foundation, a staff member who has been um, identified for Zone 33 as the major gifts officer, and that is Lori Menzel. And Lori uh, will bring to uh, our district, as she does all district up in Zone 33, she will bring uh, some major gift and plan giving resources to us and is a great partner for us. But Dana will do a great job uh, in this new endeavor of hers. Next slide, please. Just some of the examples that uh, Dana wanted to share with you, some examples of the plan giving and major gift opportunities. Uh, this is where the benefactor, um, the, the bequest society, major donors, these are some of the things that they will help, uh, help you through and understand and opportunities on how you can become uh, one of these uh, uh, of these opportunities to um, for your donations. Next slide, please. The annual giving chair is Gary Norris, and he's chairman this year. And these are the, the they deal mostly with the uh, every Rotarian every year, the sustainer, the district alumni uh, fund uh, to give to that. We encourage 100% for each uh, club member to give $25 a year and become an every Rotarian every year. A sustainer at $100 a, a year. We encourage the 100% of that, but those are encouragements. Many of you are doing a phenomenal job. Some clubs are 100% and we do appreciate that 
and applaud the efforts that you do put in to becoming uh, the, having those statuses. For the annual fund gold for district uh, for the district this year coming up is one hundred and seventy five dollars uh, per capita. And remember that you have a, a team of foundation advocates and they are listed on the website and again in your resource uh, material. Next slide, please. Stewardship. Now stewardship comes after the grants uh, that once they've been given and the clubs are uh, involved in um, uh, completing those grants. Jennifer Mead is the stewardship chair this year and she this is the kind of the ethical responsibility arm and the management resource arm of, of the uh, grants. This is as you're working in your grants. These are the go-to people uh, if you uh, need to uh, ask a question, uh, have a concern, something is irregular and not working for you, uh, go uh, be sure and contact Jennifer and she can contact, uh, get you in touch with one of the individuals or help your, herself in one of the uh, committee members. This is where we want the uniform treatment of all grants and they certainly see to it that we have that. But we want to remind you that all grants must be closed. All of our district grants must be closed before our district can apply for funding for the following year's cycle. Uh, that so that we'll have uh, the ability to uh, give you the DDF for that. Next, next uh, slide, please. Important guidelines that Jennifer is encouraging for the grantees, maintain records of all the expenses in your receipts, your invoices, have that proof of payment, and always continue to put those uh, with your um, information online as you get it. It's easier if you'll just uh, upload those as you get them. Complete and submit all, re all of the required reports for your grant documentation. You have deadlines. You have two of them. It's January the 30th for the progress report and then May 15th for your uh, final report. Uh, if there's any uh, deviation for um, the plan uh, for the approved grant uh, that occurs, uh, certainly notify the stewardship committee. And don't forget your deadline uh, for this year. Uh, the 1920 grant is May the 15th. Next slide, please. Certainly want to thank you uh, again for all that you do for the foundation, your foundation. Um, Remember that this is a team that is experts in their field. They're here to help you get where you want to be in each one of your clubs. And again, please don't forget the resource materials uh, that are being provided for you. Now I'd like to turn, there are three folks. Uh, I do want to go ahead and say something about our, our uh, foundation celebration. Just a reminder, that the Foundation Celebration Committee is the one who helps us have an annual, uh, uh, organizes for a celebration uh, with our, um, uh, what we've done throughout the year in foundation work. And this year, if you'll put on your calendar, uh, Saturday, November the 7th, uh, that's Saturday, November 7th, uh, and we will be going to the uh, Taldman uh, Museum of Arts in Roanoke. And I want you to save the date for that. And I appreciate you putting that up for us, um, Kathy. So uh, Andrea Milliron does a great job in sharing that. We so appreciate the work that she and that very creative committee is doing. And we appreciate the fact that uh, we're, we're on board and uh, of planning for this coming event. So look for a lot of new information uh, as we, um, to unfold as it comes about. Thanks to all of the, the folks who are our chairman in your, in your foundation steering team. They are tremendous. So now I'll turn over uh, this to uh, Pam Chip. Thank you.
Thank you, Vivian. You run a great ship. We love you being our captain. <laughs> Well, um, I, my name is Pamela Chitwood, and thank you guys for Zooming with us and being on the, the screen with us today. As president elects, you, has, you have a, uh, a great mission ahead of you, so we appreciate it. Next slide for me, please. So I wanna ask you how many joined Rotary thinking it was a secret society, that you were coming into this and you thought, oh, what is a Rotarian, what do they do? I was totally that person. I thought, oh, what is Rotary? Yeah, it was, it was so cool. So now that I'm a Rotarian, I know it's not a secret, but that's okay. I still love it and I still love what I'm doing. But guess what? There's another secret society you can join in Rotary. Okay, no, it's not a secret. I'm really sorry, but that's okay. You can still join. We still want to have you. Uh, and you know what? This is the time to join because Rotary is dependent upon this, this not so secret society. These, these people are the backbone of Rotary. These people are what we know every single year will make Rotary happen. We will make the projects happen. We will make sure that we can depend on these folks to keep Rotary going, no matter what the pandemic is. So Paul Harris Society members are those that donate a thousand per year as a reoccurring commitment. They wear a pennant upon their chest that says, I'm going to be there. You can count on me. No matter what, I'm there for you, buddy. No, no matter what rain, shine, pandemic brings, no matter how many masks we wear, a thousand dollars is coming to Rotary. Whether you give through the annual fund, whether you give in polio now, or any global project, you know what? You don't even have to be a Rotarian and you can join the Paul Harris Society. As long as you give a thousand to, Rot to Rotary, every year is a reoccurring commitment. Donating is easy. You can do it on Rotary Direct. You can make a commitment on my Rotary. You can even tell me I'm gonna send you a thousand dollar check to the Rotary Foundation every year and I'll sign you up for the Rotary Paul Harris Society. We got you. Next slide, please. Every year, your Paul Harris Society chair, which is me, I make a commitment to you. We're gonna get you that information. We're gonna let you know those people who are making that commitment, who are your standby tough Rotarians who say, I'll make that commitment to you. I'll be a member of that Paul Harris Society. We're gonna let you know who those people are who are giving $1,000 every year to let you know to celebrate them. You'll be a part of a society that's celebrated every year at socials. If you don't want to be celebrated, we'll keep it hush-hush. You can just be a quiet member of the Paul Harris Hair Society. It's okay too. But you know what? We want to give you that information so that you can be at the district level being celebrated. So I encourage you. Next slide, please. This is what it looks like. 7570, we have 3,249 Rotarians. This year, there are 134 Paul Harris Society members. It's not very much, but you know what? I'm not asking for much this year. I'm asking to add 16 new Paul Harris Society members. Look around the room. You probably just see yourself today. Could you be a Paul Harris Society member? Could you commit to giving that $1,000? Could it be you? All right, they'll think. When I usually look around the room, can I see someone in my club that could be that Paul Harris Society member? Thinking caps, guys. We need to add 16 members this year. Can we do it? There's your challenge. I think you can do it. Let's add some Paul Harris Society members to be our backbone, to be those people that we count on no matter what so that we know that Polio Plus will continue, the annual giving will continue. And from now on, we know that Rotary will continue, pandemic or not, fan fundraiser or not, Paul Harris Society continues because they wear a pennant that says so. Next slide, please. Here's my information. If you want more information, call me. Look in your resource manual. It's fabulous, thanks to our Rotarian crew. And anything else you want, there's my number. Call me, I'll help you out. Thanks, guys.
Pam, thank you so very much. That was great. And your enthusiasm is so exciting to just be around. Uh, one of the things that I just wanted to uh, reiterate is on the annual fund, if you'll click share, that would be a big help as well. Um, we'd appreciate it if you do the share, annual fund share. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Mark Hudson, uh, District Grants Committee co-chair with Diane Woodson. Rounding out our committee are Dale Coombs and Carolyn Gordon. Next slide. So what, what impresses me most about Rotary are the amazing projects that Rotarians do in their communities and internationally. That's why I'm really happy to be part of the District Grants Committee. District Grants puts your foundation contributions back to work where you live and work. It enables you, through the foundation's matching fund, to make an impact close to home. Our committee helps you develop projects with an eye on the grants guidelines. We lead the process towards awarding grants and then we help the clubs get started with these funds. Ultimately, we're the conduit to the stewardship that monitors the appropriate use of these grant funds. Next slide. So, when you think about it, what we really want PEs to do is to inspire your clubs to create great projects that require these grant funds. Nothing pulls communities or clubs together better than a unifying project. Find those projects. We have resources to, available to you in the Grants Resource Center on the district website. It's a requirement that someone from the club attend either the CTT training or the grants webinar each year. The grants webinar is online and available to you right now. Listen to it, you'll learn a lot. When two or more clubs, also keep in mind, when two or more clubs come together on a project, that's called a collaborative grant. Collaborative grants, maximum contribution to the district can be up to $12,000. So when you take that $12,000 and the club's matching $12,000, you've got $24,000 on, on any given project. That can make a big impact in your area. Now is the time for you to plan your grants for your year as president. Write this date down. The deadline to submit your grants, your grant proposal, is July 31st, 2020. July 31st, 2020. Next slide, please. To help you with your district grants, we can attend a club or an area meeting to discuss district grants. There's a committee assigned, a committee member that's assigned to your area. You'll get that, their contact information at the end of the presentation. There's also a great uh, FAQ handout um, that we've included in the PETS packet. We also offer a preliminary review of a grant submission to help you make sure that your grant is prepared properly. You must get that to us by July 15th for us to get back to you in a timely manner. Next slide. Here's some dates to remember. If your club currently has a district grant, there's a report due on May 15, 2020. That's probably your current president's issue, not yours. In a special response to COVID-19, there's a ten. There's ten thousand dollars that will be distributed between up to ten grants. Your current president should be aware of this. The grant request for COVID nineteen grant. Uh, the deadline for that is May first of twenty twenty. Again, that's not your year, but you might want to get involved with that. Those funds must be spent this rotary year. It's not in your rotary year. This current rotary year. Your most important date. Regarding district grants, again, July 31st, 2020, that's when you have to submit your district grant proposal. So please make district grants a priority for you. It's good for your club. It's good for your community. It'll help make your year a better year. And here you go with the district grants committee. Contact them if you need, the, if you need to uh, uh, help within your particular area. Thanks a lot. Do good grants. Bye.
Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that so much. And next we'll have um, Mike Quillen speak to us on global grants. I'll pull your slides up for you, Mike. Mike, I think you're muted. Good morning again, <laughs> unmuted. Uh, happy to be with you this morning to share the work of the Global Grant Subcommittee. Dale Coombs from Clark County, and Jeff Howard from the Salem Club are our, our members. And what you're seeing is uh, our photographs from existing global grant projects and you may not know it, but a global grant can be in our district. So you see the Appalachian Miles for Smiles trailer, which is the result of a global grant that was carried out right in our own district. There, I believe that global grants really epitomize uh, this coming year's theme, Rotary Opens Opportunities, because global grants truly do provide opportunities throughout the world through safe water, and uh, sanitation and education and health, the areas of focus for Rotary. Next slide, please. I have a, uh, a one sentence uh, summary of what a global, grant project, a global grant is. So I'll run through that with you. A global grant is funding by the Rotary Foundation for a significant project with a budget of at least $3,000, $30,000, carried out in partnership between an international rotary club or district and a host rotary club or district to address a need identified by, by a community in the host's country, which aligns with one of Rotary's six areas of focus. A global grant applications on last our district grant applications can be submitted at any time and they're submitted to the Rotary Foundation not to the district. There in 2018-19 there were uh, over 1400 global grant projects with funding of almost a hundred million dollars so they are significant and do provide significant opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we as a committee advocate international service by clubs and, and we do provide assistance to individuals and clubs that are interested in pursuing the uh, global grant projects. Uh, we monitor them as they are ongoing, again, available to help as uh, projects are undertaken. And we do recommend the use of district funds for prospective global grant projects. District designated funds are available uh, for global grant projects. And when the district does contribute to a project, the Rotary Foundation matches the district's contribution uh, one to one. So it's a way to really help um, fund a global grant project. Next slide. There are a few things we really would like for you to consider as PE for your club next year. We would really like for each club to budget some amount for international service. You don't have to undertake a global grant project to participate in international service, but we would love for you to budget some amount that you could use to help another club in our district or uh, uh, an, our district to um, undertake a global grant project. We'll be happy to help you get a, a program uh, highlighting a global grant project that has been undertaken by one of our clubs. And we uh, really hope that you will uh, um, refer any questions. Anyone in your club who is interested in a global uh, grant We'll be happy to uh, help and see if we can uh, get something going. We also would recommend and hope that you will appoint a international service uh, chair and have a committee that will uh, be dealing with our uh, international service and global grants 
even if it's just to decide how to spend a, a small amount that you've budgeted toward a global grant project. And I would ask that all the PEs at some point go to our district website, to the global grants uh, page on our district website, and take a look at the Guide to Global Grants. That's a wonderful way to quickly learn about global grants and how they work. Next slide, please. So as I say, we'll be, we're here to provide uh, advice to clubs interested in either undertaking a project or providing financial assistance to a project. Uh, we will be happy to facilitate uh, club programs uh, on global grants and, and our district is very active in global grants so there are several uh, underway and we'll, we would love to have a representative from a club uh, who, which has undertaken a grant to speak to your club if you haven't. Uh, next slide. Now, these are the members of the committee uh, and we'll be happy to, to help we, uh, uh, we do sponsor the, um, typically the uh, club training, uh, but we, of course, aren't having it in person this year. So I do want to direct you to the, both for district grants and for global grants to the district website. Uh, to, if you'll look under district grants, you'll find our grants management webinar. Uh, and uh, which we recorded from earlier in the year, and that provides you significant information about the nuts and bolts of both our district grants and our global grants. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, so much. Mike does a great job and kind of oversees all the grants as well, and thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, great report. I think that Tamara Rodenauer is, is uh, on, Kathy, if you could find her, and Tamara, if you'd raise your hand, and if Tamara had any additional information for us on scholarships, I'd love for her to uh, include that. Okay. Um, well, while I'm trying to find Tamara, and I do see her now, uh, we have a question from Kim Ohl. Uh Mike, can you define an international host club if the global grant is for a domestic global grant project? Yes, the international sponsor, if we were to undertake a project here in our district, we, we would reach out to a club in another country or a district. And we do have relationships. Our district governors have many uh, partners or our classmates in their district governor class, uh, we, we do have resources to identify an international partner should uh, someone want to undertake a project in our district and therefore become the host club for a, a project. So we can, we can help identify an international sponsor, which would be any club or district outside the United States. Thank you, Mike. Tamara, I've got you live now. Well, first of all, I want to thank Vivian for doing such a great job of presenting on behalf of our committees in her area. And I also want to thank Rick Furr for updating our scholarship page on the district website. I want to encourage everyone to go there and look for the scholarship application. Um, one thing I did want to let everyone know is that the scholarship application that's up there now has last year's dates on it. I've been trying to find someone who has the computer capability of turning of changing information on PDF docs, which I do not have. So if you have the ability to do that and can let me know, that would be great. Um, one thing I also wanted to let people know in case they're not aware, um, qualified scholarship candidates will um, have plans to go to graduate school and study in the areas of the six areas of focus. And as I hope you all know, that's peace and conflict resolution and prevention, disease prevention and treatment, maternal and child health, water and sanitation, basic education and literacy, and economic development, uh, uh, economic and community development. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know or Vivian know, and we're happy to, to help you all out with this process. Tamara, thank you so much for, for enlightening us with the additional information. Um, just checking one more time is if Tracy's on and does she have some additional information as well? 
Kathy, would you look for is us? Tracy to... is on, and I'm, I've am i got her up, um, but I, Tracy, can you unmute yourself? I'm trying to unmute you, and it's not letting me. Tamara, while we wait for Tracy, this is not a bad. Send me that document, and I can see if I can help you with that. Okay, absolutely. I will. Thank you so much, Nineveh. Tracy, I'm still trying to unmute you. It's not letting me. Okay. I'm sorry. We did have another question come in on grants, and this is from... Megan Schalker Fulcher. Fulcher. Uh, you're wondering if satellite clubs can apply for district grants. Is Megan's question. Mike, you want to take uh, that? Uh, Rotaract clubs can apply and satellite clubs can apply. Thank you, Mike. And now we have Tracy unmuted. Yes. Did, was there a question for me? Sorry, I had to let go take care of my dog for a second. <laughs> no, Tracy, I just thought you might want to add to the plus that's in Polio Plus that, and any other information that we didn't get to cover today. Well, right now it's COVID-19, baby. <laughs> um, we've had, I saw on Facebook Live yesterday, a team in Nigeria that um, they had, they were wearing their Polio Plus um, clothes, but they were promoting um, washing your hands and wearing your mask and here's a packet that can help you at home and all the here's food and you know all that kind of stuff so um, but polio plus is what Amber talked about earlier too it's all the other diseases even when Ebola was around um, they they look to pull to the polio teams that Rotary International has to help with you know how do we address this so it's really awesome it makes me proud to be a Rotarian Thank you, Tracy. Are there any more questions for the foundation team? Just one. If, if I could add one thing, October 24th, everybody write that date down. That is World Polio Day. And go to endpolio.org and you'll find a toolkit. You can plan a speaker for your club. Um, you can plan an event and help us um, celebrate all the great work we've done with polio on October 24th. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Trace. Kathy, thank you uh, for uh, getting us in and out for <laughs> speaking. And thank everyone uh, on the call for just being supportive. And uh, we're here to help you. Uh, and just remember that you've got a lot of expertise from a lot of, a lot of committees. Thanks again. Great, thank you. I have someone raising their hand um, and, and I'm gonna try and find you. Bear with me for a second. Nicholas Morris. Nicholas, did you have a question? I'm trying to unmute you. Well, if you do have a question, if you would just type it into the, uh, the Q&A section, that would be great. So now I'm going to turn it over to our district governor nominee, Tara McCall. Tara is a, a current uh, area governor, and uh, she's also a member of the Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee Club. And I'll pull your slides up, Tara. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, everybody. So I'm so excited. I guess I have the best job this year. I get to work with Gold Club and um, work with all the clubs to celebrate all of the amazing things that we know that, that our clubs do every year. Through the process this year of trying to update Gold Club and add new things, um, we solicited a lot of feedback from you all and really um, did that more so through the AGs, but on, on your behalf. And what we wanted to know is what do you want from Gold Club? And a lot of what we heard was some consistency. So, as we looked at um, year over year how to make this 
to fulfill the purpose of Gold Club, but at the same time remain engaging for our clubs. So we hope that that is what we have, and um, we're going to briefly look at it today. Um, it is in your resource manual. It's in draft form, so we're still working to finalize just to make sure after today there's no feedback that's glaringly needs to be changed before we put it out in the final version. But if you see something, please let me know, and we'll try to review that and see if that's another change that needs to be made. The one thing I wanted to talk about first is from additional feedback this year, the, the dates that are implemented for the Rotary year are also going to be kind of firm dates for Gold Club. Um, as we looked at trying to make it fit the Rotary year so that it, it extends the whole time and promotes the whole Rotary year, we're not going to hand those out at district conference. And I know some clubs love that, but we will work to make that special for the clubs in different ways. And we can work with each of you and see what we can do at a club level. But um, to do that at district conference became very cumbersome this year and probably not as precise as it should have been. So we're going to um, take the feedback from DGE Nancy and try to grow that and lots of other people, but hopefully that is not um, too much of a sore spot. Let's see how we can make it special in other ways. Next slide, please. So just a reminder, the purpose of Gold Club is um, to provide a path towards a well-managed club centered on our avenues of service. So again, you know, we don't just do these things just for fun. The purpose of Gold Club is to have an engaged club and keep people active and to celebrate all the wins and all the wonderful things that our clubs are doing. So just a reminder that it's not just busy work, it's activities that make us all better, which is why we are here. So here are the mandatory activities, and I know there's a lot on there, don't really expect you to read it all, but um, when we looked at maintaining consistency, we really tried to do that. There are two things I'm gonna point out on this slide and you may or may not be able to see them, but they're in, it's in the resource manual. Um, the portion that, that has identify your club, whatever that position is in um, DACDB, we added the youth service coordinator. So at a club level, if we could have everybody enter that person, we all know that it's a big job managing um, the way that we work with youth throughout the district and the background checks. So we want to make sure that we have on a club level a person who can help facilitate that for each club and that we're, we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's all throughout the district and handling working with youth in the most productive and positive way. And then the other is the last one that is in blue, and this is DGE Nancy's initiative to continue highlighting all the work that Rotary has done related to polio and all that we continue to do. So we all know that Rotary has worked tirelessly for years to eradicate polio and we will finish the job, but we all know also that we can't stop until that job is finished. So one thing that we can do and one thing she's asking us to do is to hold an event that is open to our communities and um, to initiate telling our communities all that we have done and all that we continue to do and in that event try to raise funds and continue to support the eradication of polio so also in that i would say this ties everything together this will also help you bring new members. This will also help you tell your story. So use Amber's tips on how to tell the story and share your events on social media. Also in the resource manual, you will find the Rotary Citation brochure for this upcoming year. And this is not where consistency was maintained. It's changing in big ways this year, but it's really exciting. So this year, the Rotary Citation when you log into um, Rotary Club Central and you see all the events that are there, there are 25 activities that are listed. And um, for the 2021 year to maintain Rotary Citation and to be recognized by Rotary International as that engaged club, you, you need to complete only 13. So, you know, that's very doable and especially go ahead and go to the next slide for me, Kathy. Yeah. 
when you look at the mandatory activities and you notice that we've moved them around a little bit and we did that on purpose, but the reason we did that is because those ones that are highlighted in gold, if you complete those mandatory activities in Gold Club, you have also satisfied the 13 in the, that would um, give you the rotary citation recognition. So we moved those to the top and highlighted them and you can see that in your resource manual as well. But it's just that simple. If you participate in Gold Club, then you also can qualify for Rotary Citation. And that's the whole reason that we have these Gold Club and Rotary Citation is to recognize clubs for good work. So we're all doing it. Let's just help our clubs be recognized where we know that they so deserve that. Um, this slide is, um, just a reiteration that we haven't changed it. The club sizes and um, number of electives required stayed the same. We just put it on here for you to look at and be a reminder that we didn't change it, but um, there it is. And if you have questions about that, I'm happy to answer those. Then the next slide is questions. If anybody has any questions, happy to answer. I know you probably need some time to look through it. so. Feel free to do that. Send me an email, call me, um, whatever your thoughts are. But these, these recognitions are both very first deserved by our clubs, but also very attainable. And I would love to see all 83 of our fabulous clubs receive both this year. So let us know how we can help. You all are cracking me up. Any questions? Awesome. Sarah, appreciate that. And now we have a, a special treat in store for you. We have Cindy, Cindy Hunter from the Rotary Club of Woodstock. She's a past president of that club. She is a certified trainer. She's worked tirelessly with volunteers and she's gonna talk to us today about best practices for leading volunteers. Good morning. Slide, Cindy. I'll wait for my slides to pop up. Um, Amber, I just want you to see that I am channeling Rotary Wearable um, just for you this morning. Um, and I, you know, I realize that I'm your closing act and the, I'm the only thing standing between you and the bathroom or lunch or, or whatever. So I'll talk really fast, which I tend to do anyway. Um, as, as we go through this presentation, I, you're gonna think that Stephanie and Amber and Andy and I all coordinated our presentations for today. And we didn't, none of us had seen each other's presentations before today. But, but I think what that will show you is just the consistency of the message um, of, of what we all have to say. So what I'm gonna talk about today is, is how to lead volunteers. And it, it just kills me not to be able to see your faces because you know for me, it's all about the relationship and the, the being able to, to gauge audience reactions. So to be sitting here talking to my computer is a little challenging. And I just want to apologize in advance um, for most of today's session. I've had a cat who has been participating with me. So if a little face pops up, um, her name is Izzy and she's a good rotary cat. Um, so let's talk about on my first slide, um, here's our agenda. And, and this is kind of where we're headed today. We're going to talk first about how you lead. Um, we'll talk about how you go about recruiting volunteers. And, um, and for many of us, we're probably not nearly as effective with that as we should be. We'll talk about mentoring. And my last topic for today will be communication. So on my next slide, let's talk about leadership. Super leader. Um, think about the best manager or leader you've ever had. If you're like me, a face immediately pops into your head. And, and I was very blessed that in when I began my professional career right out of college, in quick succession, I had one of the best leaders I'd ever had, who was followed by one of the worst leaders I've ever had. So when you think about good leaders, what are some of the characteristics that you think about? And again, this is killing me because I'm not getting audience participation. But you probably think they're fair, they're honest, 
There's someone I can trust. Maybe there's somebody who held you accountable even when that didn't feel good. Um, for me, they had a great, they have great senses of humor. And, and they were someone or are someone that I wanna be like, they're a good role model. Now, if I ask you to think about, nope, go back, Kathy, please. If I ask you to think about um, your worst leader, again, for most of us, a face is going to pop into our head. Um, I had the, the misfortune of working for a screamer. Um, and when things didn't go their way, they screamed. Um, they might be petty or they might be a micromanager or sneaky. And if you think about these traits, all of these traits, or for me at least, all of these traits are almost always personality traits as opposed to technical skills. And so as a leader, it's never an option for me to go to work and say, wow, you know, I'm just not feeling that trustworthiness thing today. It just doesn't work that way. So when we think of our volunteers, if I were talking to your volunteers right now and I asked them this question, first of all, would they picture your face? And second of all, in, resp in response to which question? So that's your food for thought. So on the next slide, let's talk about how we lead. Do we select people so that they can grow or create that environment that they just can't wait to be a part of? Leaders are truth tellers. They're feedback providers. Um, and they do that in a way that's honest and respectful. They respect differences. They value diversity. Um, great managers and leaders tend to be great listeners. And, and to go along with being a great listener, they usually ask great questions. Um, you know, I like leaders that think outside of the box. And, you know, if you are a leader right now, um, I'm a, a manager in my organization. And, you know, we just have affectionately referred to the last two months as business as unusual, because there is nothing normal about how we are doing things. So, you know, thinking out of the box, not even, there isn't even a box right now because we're, we're reacting every day. Leaders who focus on the people around them give power and spotlight to others without a second thought. Remember that as the manager or the leader or the club president, you almost always have 51% of the vote, but it's, it's what we do with that other 49% that, that really makes a difference to the people we lead. So on the next slide, here are some thoughts to ponder. Um, don't be a committee of one. You are not the keeper of all good ideas. And as soon as a leader, you have to remember, as soon as a leader or a manager, as soon as we say, here's what I think, what, what do you think that's going to do to anybody else's opinion? Some of the most powerful words you can say as a leader are, what do you think? And then listen to the answer. People want meaningful opportunities with something they care about and with people they enjoy. Um, going back to um, you know, the strategic plan, increasing impact, expanding our reach, enhancing participant engagement, and increasing our ability to adapt. How much does that play into it? Don't always be the expert and plan for the unexpected. And, and a couple of the other speakers have, have talked about that. You know, we're living in the unexpected world right now. But I would add to that, don't, don't shoot from the hip. Uh, think about what could go wrong before it actually does. On my next slide, we talk about things that leaders need to do. Leaders need to remove obstacles. You know, if you think of great sports coaches, they aren't out on the field running plays. They're providing knowledge and skills and training to their players and then they're removing obstacles that get in the way of those players' success. So, you know, we're the coaches. We are the ones that are setting the people around us up for success. Um, and I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, if anyone is interested in a copy of these slides, they are on the PETS training page on the website. So um, I happen to be a note taker. So if I were listening right now, I would be furiously scribbling notes all over my slides. On the next slide, we talk about providing meaningful opportunities. 
you know, structure things in a way that volunteers have an opportunity for growth and challenge and renewal. You know, challenge what they do, which is the content, with how they do it. Um, you know, I come from a training background and, and, you know, Stephanie spoke to my heart when she mentioned the WIFM. You know, what's in it for me? You know, when we are hiring people, when we are training people, when we are cultivating volunteers, it's not about what we want. It is about what's in it for them. Why do I want to do this for Rotary or for this leader? Um, you know, Stephanie also mentioned a phrase that just makes me cringe. And, and I hope that I've never uttered these words, but you've all heard them. But we've always done it that way. And, and you know what? Maybe we have always done it that way. But while we're continuing to do things the same way we've all, always done them, everything around us is changing. So to encourage people, ask your volunteers, do you know how important this is to the organization? And if they don't, tell them. Have you ever asked your volunteers, what talents do you have that you're not using right now? Um, many times we will find that we've plugged someone in a role and they have skills that we are not using. On the next slide, I wanna talk for just a minute about careers. If you've never had a discussion with a volunteer about their career, your chances of keeping them are greatly diminished. When your people feel like you care about them enough to develop them, they believe that they are with an organization that, that will be a long-term opportunity for them. What we're really talking about here is careers. And this next slide shows a quote that I use. I work in human resources, for those of you that, that I don't know. Um, and you know what? People aren't the most important asset people. The, the right people are. Jim Collins, talks of, Jim Collins talks about having the right people on the bus, but he goes further and talks about having the right people in the right seat on the bus. So now let's talk about recruiting volunteers. On the next slide, I want you to read these questions and, and I hope that you all are laughing at yourselves. Um, when I pose these questions to your leaders at DITS, um, got a belly laugh from some folks on this. Um, and number four is my personal favorite. We missed you at a meeting. Let me tell you about your new job. Do any of these sound familiar to you? Um, this is desperation hiring, folks. Um, and, and in volunteerism, as well as in our business world, how much time have you spent on managing bad hires? They're expensive, they're toxic, and sometimes once you get them, it's difficult to get rid of them. So if you're not hiring for fit, um, it's not just a step in the wrong direction, it, it could be long-term damage. So here are some questions to ask potential volunteers. When we are recruiting volunteers, Kathy, oh, can you go to the next slide, please? When we are recruiting volunteers, um, we need to look at a couple of things. Stephanie mentioned skill development. Amber mentioned making Rotary irresistible. Wow, isn't that a powerful word? Wouldn't you love to believe that our organization was irresistible? And what are we doing to make it irresistible? Um, successful managers are the ones that do a great job of selecting people that not only fit into the organization, but that bring something valuable to the table. Um, getting the right person in the first place will significantly increase the odds that we keep them. Um, when we are talent-focused managers, which is kind of what I've been talking about, um, this gives us a way to enrich the lives of the people that work for us by giving them those meaningful opportunities. Um, on the next slide, let's talk for just a minute about all of those volunteers that we've been with for years. Are you re-recruiting them? Because if you're not, you may be the only person who isn't. You know, folks have opportunities. You know, right now, um, people have a lot of time on their hands. And um, if we aren't meeting their needs, uh, Maybe somebody else is. Maybe, maybe they volunteer for two or three other organizations and some other organization is doing a better job of, of just you know, getting them you know, where, they, where they live. Um, 
And another thing that we need to remember is a committee assignment in Rotary should not be a life sentence. Just because we've done something for five years or 10 years doesn't mean there aren't other opportunities to, to engage people with us. Um, so again, I mentioned this earlier, what skills or interests do you have that maybe you're not using or that we're not tapping into? Ask those questions. The next slide talks about why volunteers quit. Um, these are the three main reasons people leave. They don't feel connected to their leader, they don't feel appreciated, or they don't feel they're growing. Um, again, this quote at the bottom of the slide, people don't leave companies, people leave people. People are not going to leave Rotary because they have a fundamental difference of opinion with our corporate mission. They're gonna leave because of how we made them feel. Um, when, employee, when volunteers aren't doing well, they need to know that, that there's something we can do to help them. Um, sometimes it's not the person that's the problem, it's how the person's being treated. On the next slide, I talk a little bit about mentoring. And with mentoring, um, it is, it can be a formal relationship or an informal relationship. You know, in our clubs, we have sponsors and usually those sponsors are, you know, maybe an informal relationship, but we don't know what that relationship looks like after they've, they've joined our club. Does it continue? Or do I get you in the door and then kind of turn you loose? So mentoring has two great benefits. It's an opportunity to transfer skills and knowledge um, and it's also an opportunity to inspire loyalty. Doesn't have to be complex. Um, one thing about being a mentor is you have to be real. You have to be honest about what you're really good at. You have to be really honest about what you stink at because most of us aren't good at everything. On the next slide are some tips for how to be a mentor. What, what would a mentor relationship look like? Um, if I'm mentoring a new employee, same thing applies in my club. What have I learned that, that counts? What surprised me? When did something not go the way that I had hoped? And for many of us who are long-term Rotarians, what do I know now that I wish I had known then? For me, I would have jumped in with both feet a lot sooner. Uh, I kind of sat back for a while and kind of watched and listened and, and I wish that I had not missed out on those first couple of years. At the bottom of the slide, you have something called a take 10 check-in. And I can't take credit for this. So this is from um, a book called Keeping the Good Ones by Beverly Kay. And it is a book about retention and engagement in our workplaces. And so think about how you might use this Take 10 check-in if you are working with a new volunteer, or maybe you've recruited someone new to your club. So on a periodic basis, just 10 minutes, three questions. How are you doing? How's the group doing? And how can I help? Sometimes you might not get past the first question. And when you don't, that's okay, because that's where you need to be spending your time. The next slide um, is 10 sentence starters that you need to know. Um, and if you're not interested in printing the slides off, grab your phone and take a picture of this slide because this is, think about these sentences. Think about the last time someone said to you, you really made a difference, bye. Or of all the things I enjoy most about you is this. My favorite is the last one. And I, I try to make sure that I don't go through a day where I don't say to someone, you made my day because. Um, and if we look for those opportunities, I think you'll find that you have lots of opportunities to use these sentences to encourage and empower and motivate the people around you. On the next slide, I want you to look at the sentence in the center of the page. What do you see? And no, that was not just a horrible mistake with no spacing. So some of you see opportunity is nowhere. And some of you see opportunity is now here. So not only is it our job to help people see opportunities, but to share opportunities. The message that we need to send to our talented people 
is that if they are looking for an opportunity, the opportunity is now here with us. So on, my, on the next slide, opportunity, the bottom line for, for opportunity is that more than any other factor, people stay in organizations or stay engaged with organizations because of an opportunity to be challenged, to do meaning, to meaningful work, and to learn. Going back to where we started today with Stephanie, it's the with them, what's in it for me? So my last topic is information. And, and let me start by saying information is not communication. Um, having the scoop or being out of the loop. In the absence of information, if you don't already know this, in the absence of information, people will make it up. If they don't hear accurate information from us, they will go with the latest rumor that sounds great. Um, silence can backfire. No news is not no news. Um, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth should not be three different things. Um, think about how we communicate. And, you know, number three, heart face to face is, you know, not, not what we can do right now. But many times, and when we get back to normal, and we will get back to normal, think about the best way to communicate the information you are needing to communicate. If it's bad news, it needs to be in face, in, 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 in face to face communication. Um, if it's complicated information, it probably needs to be in some written format so you aren't trusting people's mem memories. Um, on the next slide, we talk about communication having a purpose. You know, most of us, although I like to talk, but most of us don't just talk for no reason. We communicate for a reason. It's to tell people something that they need to know, to tell them what to do, to give information, to persuade them, or to explain something. Being a good communicator is tough because you may be a good communicator or a good speaker, but a poor listener, or a good listener, but not good at getting our points across. So on the next slide, I wanna talk for just a moment about what you say when you don't say a word. I used to um, teach a class on um, interpersonal communication. And first and foremost, remember that silence is a form of feedback. Um, and it may or may not communicate the message that you are trying to communicate. As leaders, when we don't react to positive behaviors, positive behaviors, our volunteers may think we don't care. Nonverbal behaviors convey how our message is received. You have to remember that the words convey the content, but the nonverbal behaviors convey the intent. Nonverbal expression behaviors can be facial expression, posture, gestures, tone of voice, and you've all heard this, how we say it is more important than what we say. So if we go to the next slide, I want you to think about this phrase. And if we were all together, I would be asking you, different people in the audience, to say this phrase meaning different things. So if I'm having a bad day, you know, I may frown at you and cross my arms and go, well, what do you want me to do about that? If I'm really genuinely interested in helping, my body language is going to be open. I'm going to be leaning forward to you and going, what would you like me to do about that? How can I help? And just remember with the arms crossed and the frown and, you know, maybe I'm leaning back to put some distance, you know, when there is a mismatch with the nonverbal communication and the words, we always believe the nonverbal communication. On the next slide, I've got some statistics for you, and maybe you've seen these before. When we communicate, and this is more in face-to-face -face communication, so I'm pretending right now that we're in face-to-face -face communication, 7% of the message is interpreted through the words. So for all of us that you know spend time crafting our message and thinking about what we're gonna say, that's important, but the other 93% of the message is communicated by how it is said. So in another example, if you walked into my office or came up to me at a club meeting and said, Cindy, I, I'm, I'm really hoping you can help me with this. And my response is, oh, oh yeah, I'd be happy to help you with that today. 
What's the message? The word said, oh yeah, I'd be happy to help with you. But the 93% pretty much said, it's not looking good and tomorrow's not looking good either. And you believe that 93%. So, you know, think about how you look when you are communicating. Are you showing openness? Are you leaning forward? Are you gesturing with your hands? Um, maybe moving closer together or leaning slightly. You know, if you're thinking about something, you know, you might be tilting your head. Um, you know, some of us do this when we're thinking. Um, many times we show that we're ready to help by open gestures, which are really hard to do when you're seeing me from like the neck up. So where we've been today, we've talked about how you lead. We've talked about, Kathy, if you can go to my next slide. We've talked about how you lead. We've talked about how you go about recruiting volunteers. We've talked about mentoring. We've talked about communicating. Um, this next slide shows another one of my favorite quotes. It's a terrible thing to look over your shoulder when you're trying to lead and find no one there. I hope that this information was helpful and that there was a nugget or two um, and that you'll be able to use this information as you lead your clubs to great things this year. So on my last slide, thank you so much for spending all of this time with us today. Please be safe, stay healthy, and if you can, please stay home. Thank you. Cindy, thank you so very, very much. That's a message we all needed to hear and all will need to continue to hear as we lead our volunteer organization. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to turn it back over to Nancy Whitlock for a few more additional information and updates. Thank you, Kathy. I thought Cindy was going to be the last one talking today, but here I am again. Um, I really apologize for the weather-related issues in the beginning. Um, I didn't give you the wonderful introduction to Director Stephanie that I had hoped for, and I really do hope that you will go to the resource manual and read some of the things that I put in there for you. Um, particularly the leadership and service plan for um, the coming year. And I really appreciate what Tara shared when she was talking about Goal Club, because that's the first thing that I would like to uh, talk about just a little more. You will see that under both foundation and public image, I have asked you to do, like Tara said, a community-wide event. Uh, it says in Oops. We lost Nancy. I'll try and see if we can get her back. Okay, I am prepared for this. Um, can you all hear me? We, can, we, we lost you, Nancy. Can you all hear me? We're, we're losing you, Nancy. I think you're going to have to get yeah on phone. Yep. Yeah. And and so I'm on my phone. I'm on my phone. Okay. Are you catching me? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, getting back to foundation and public image and the community wide event. Oops, Nancy, we lost you again. Sorry. I think we're just going to have to stick with the old fashioned landline. So you have to unmute. Sorry, we're, not, we're not hearing you. I think you're going to have to get out of Zoom and just call in on your phone. Sorry.
Well, while Nancy's trying to get her connection, we've got a couple of questions. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and, and do those. This is a question for Tom Bell uh, to Mark Hudson. Mark, did I hear you say that Rotaract clubs are independently eligible for district grants? That is, may a Rotaract club apply for a grant without listing their sponsoring Rotary Club or another Rotary Club as the primary applicant? This is Mike. Uh, I think Mark has left the call. And Tom, we'll get back to you on that. I, uh, I can't answer that for sure. Okay, thanks, Mike. I think I had someone else raising their hand. I'm not seeing it now. Okay. Are there other questions for any of the, the panelists that we could take now? I just got a text from Nancy. Let me see if I can bring her on board here. Okay, Nancy. Oh. Are you there? Can you hear me? Now I can hear you, yes. Okay, all righty. Hope it doesn't mute me again. Um, you know what? I think I will just give up on uh, trying to go over a few items that I wanted to highlight on the leadership and service plan. Um, let me say thank you so much to all of our presenters today. I thought everyone did a wonderful job, and I'm just, I'm just so sorry that I was the fly in the ointment. Uh, one thing that I wanted to tell all of the presidents-elect is that over the next month, I will be getting in touch with each and every one of you. I would love to have a conversation on the phone so that we could talk specifically about your club, your questions, your concerns. Uh, we are a team. And uh, I just really want you to know that the whole purpose behind my service and the district is to help you. And so we're going to do that over the phone. I wish we were doing it in person, but I am grateful for the means of communication that we do have. So I look forward to talking to each and every one of you. And thank you again for agreeing to serve this year. And this is a special year. And I have no doubt that you as leaders will be able to rise to the challenges and uh, we will grow Rotary together. All right, Kathy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. All right, thanks, Nancy. Uh, we've got a question from Beverly Pitzer uh, dealing with grants. And here's the question. If we've started a project already and incurred expenses, it looks like the project is sewing face masks for essential workers, can we still submit this as a COVID-19 grant even though it's already in progress? Mike, you want to take that one? Uh, yes. Um, the Rotary Foundation is allowing expenses that go back to March 15 to be um, compensated. Um, uh, so if, if you're still in progress on it, uh, you can go ahead and apply. Um, we have not addressed uh, something that's already been completed. Uh, but I suggest you go ahead and, and, and put in your application. Thank you, Mike. Here's another question just came in. No, that was from Beverly saying thank you. <laughs> All right, if anybody has any additional questions, please type it in in the, the Q&A section. So Nancy, if you're still online, do you want to talk about uh, the uh, follow-up pets too? 
and we can talk also about some of the CTT sessions coming up. I, I dialed back in. I don't trust my connection, so I'm going to let you, Kathy, talk about PETS2 and you and I and Beth, CTT. Okay, will do. Thank you. So Nancy has gotten a Thank lot you. of... Yes, indeed. Nancy's gotten feedback from a lot of our uh, district committee chairs that since we had to have an abbreviated PETS session today, could there be a chance that they could speak to the president-elects and president nominees? So we will be scheduling what we're calling a, a follow-up PETS, but it's really going to be entitled Meet Your Rotary Support Team. And we will invite all the district committee chairs to participate in that. We'll set it up again as a webinar like this. So you can actually meet those committee chairs, find out what their committee does and how they can help you in your coming year as president of your club. So look for an invitation for that. That'll be coming out shortly. And uh, it, it'll be a nice way to learn who your support team is in the district. And they are really here, your resources, they're here to help you. And then because we had to cancel CTT live, we are scheduling some additional sessions. And I know Rotary has tons of acronyms. CTT stands for Club Team Training. And this is where I invite any Rotarian, any club member to come sit in on sessions and learn more about that particular Rotary topic. We'll be scheduling sessions for secretary training, and we've already got dates for those. I'll be publishing these on the district calendar and also sending out emails to everyone so they can know when and how to, to register for these. But um, Nancy Rudolph from the Rotary Club Strasburg will be doing our secretary training, and she's gonna do it in two different sessions. The first session will be on May 15th, that's a Friday afternoon from 4 to 5.30. The second one will be on May 29th, same time. So we've already got those dates confirmed. Uh, we'll also be doing a PI, public image session, with Amber Wilbur. Uh, and that's going to be on May 7th. Uh, and that's again 4, 30, 4 to 5.30. So thank you, Amber, for willing to do that. We've got treasurer's training. That's going to be on May 14th uh, from uh, 4 to 5.30 as well, too. Jacob Hickenbotham, who is our district treasurer, will be conducting that. Um, we're also doing a membership uh, CTT session as well, too. Uh, Andy, I think, is going to be helping us with that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, that's going to be on May 21st. So we're trying to get all these scheduled during the month of May. And again, I'll send out a, a formal notice of all the sessions and the times and how you can register for those. We're also looking at uh, DACDB training and getting that set up. Nina Beth has already contacted the DACDB team to see if they can help support some of that training for us as well, too. So thank you, Nina Beth, on that one. Uh, also looking at trying to set up a session for youth protection, because that's a very important process uh, that needs to be adhered to very accurately for the safety of our youth that we're, we're supporting and the safety of our club members. So we'll be looking to do that as well too. So stay tuned, you'll see more. We're trying to get as many of these sessions scheduled and again, trying to do them all during the month of May. So thank you. Donna Beth, do you have anything to, to add to that? No, thank you. We'll also have just one uh, quick thing. We'll also have one for public image and Amber, we picked what day for that? Uh, we had May 7th, I think, for that day. Yes. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we'll have a um, full list of when the programs are. So thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, we have a little bit of time left. If anybody has further questions, I'll give you a few minutes to type those in. Oh, we've got a question coming, several questions coming in. Thank you. Uh, this is from Robert Boone. Robert is one of our uh, out of district attendees. 
He's saying, thank you for allowing me to participate in your pet sessions. I appreciate all the time put in by the various presenters. The information provided was very useful, even though I'm out of your district. Well, thank you, Bob, for joining us. We're glad you could connect. Any other questions? Well, I'm not seeing any more. I just wanted to say thank you to all of our presenters. Thank everybody for your flexibility <laughs> in this type of training. It's our first, uh, probably it's not gonna be our last, <laughs> but thank you all so very, very much. And everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.